a lot of people i know including myself has once felt like a sort of boring way towards the book of leviticus because it just talks about a bunch of rules and what's clean and what's unclean and it's unrelatable sometimes can feel like offensive or like too difficult but the point of the book was to establish God's holiness and it teaches us how to worship God and I'm not talking about worshiping God through like sacrificing animals but um, the symbolism in it and the way that it creates heart change is what we can take from it today and apply it to our own lives so in this video I hope that I can give you I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how I applied the book of Leviticus to my life today like right now and how it's blessed me <laughs> Cherie, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I talk about living life abundantly by strengthening your relationship with Jesus Christ. We do a lot of inner work on this channel, so if that sounds interesting to you, please like and subscribe. Okay, let's get into the video. So in the book of Leviticus, we learn that God is our high priest. So we're going to talk about three different things. The first thing, the definition of a priest and the definition of a high priest. We're going to talk about the scripture that defines how God is our high priest and how he's the one true God. And then I'm gonna give you a quick testimony of how I apply Leviticus to my life today. In Exodus, God chooses the Israelites to be his people so that they can display his glory. But they were enslaved by the Egyptians and their Pharaoh. But God frees the Israelites. And in the book of Leviticus, we see how God guides and directs the Israelites. A couple of things to notice, the book of Leviticus is named after the tribe of Levi. So if that's gibberish to you, you might have heard the phrase, or if you haven't, you will hear the phrase, um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's because God made a promise to Abraham that his offspring will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. So Abraham um, named his son Isaac, who had a son named Jacob, and Jacob, his name is also Israel, God renames him Israel. And that's where you get the Israelites from because they're from is their Israel's descendants. So Jacob, aka Israel, he had 12 sons, which makes up the tribes of Israel. Levi was his third son. And Judah was the fourth son, which is the tribe of Jesus. And that's why we say Lion of the tribe of Judah. But Levi's descendants are called um, the Levites. And then the book is called Leviticus. So just kind of like the same word in different forms. Number one, what is a priest? Uh, the job of a priest was to upkeep the tabernacle which was God's dwelling place so God's home was in heaven but on earth he would dwell among the Israelites he would dwell among the people inside of the tabernacle but since he's a holy God things had to be a certain way um in order for the people basically not to be killed in front of a holy God because he's holy you can't just come up to him any kind of way the high priest had the highest position among all the priests and there were more re restrictions and responsibilities the high priest was also the only person who could enter the holy of holies so the tabernacle there were three different parts of the tabernacle and the holy of holies the place where god dwelt so um only the high priest was able to go in one time of year after all of the like restrictions and things that he had to like do and accomplish to make atonement for people's sins for the Israelite sins. The theme of the book, the scripture. So God is our high priest and the scripture that I want to reference is Leviticus 4, 3 and 4. If the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he is to present the Lord a young unblemished bull as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to bring the bull to the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord, lay his hand on the bull's head and slaughter the bull and slaughter it before the Lord. So that's the scripture I chose. It's a little weird. It's a little out there, but um, I want to explain it. So basically, there are different sacrifices and different offerings in the book. This particular sacrifice was called the sin offering, which was the most holy offering. And um, I know it says like the priest, but there were like different levels to it. So like if the priest sent, if like um, the common people sinned and it, it went on and on. It was different animals that they had to sacrifice. Um, depending on who sinned. I chose the priest because it was it needed a greater sacrifice because of the position. There's three things in the scripture that I've noticed and I want to mention. First there's an unblemished male. Um, they have to lay their hand on its the sacrifice's head and it had to be slaughtered before the Lord. And Jesus is our high priest. The high priest was the only one who can go in the holy of holies if you remember. 
Jesus was still able to like go on the holy hold of holies, if you will, because he was um because he was perfect he was able to he is god and he's able to come to god he also was the sacrifice so he's our high priest and he's also the sacrifice and he is you no know, when i say unblemished male i mean like he's literally perfect and um he's a perfect human who took our sins who were laid upon him and he was also slain upon the lord on the cross for our sins the reason why um, all of these things had to happen is to restore the relationship between God and humanity God is the one true God and I want to read uh, something on the bottom of my study Bible before I give a quick testimony the Lord is holy and it talks about how China dishes are sacred behind the glass doors which only comes out on special occasions and that picture gives us insight into how Leviticus teaches us how to treat God, the Holy One who is like no other. We are to relate to God and worship him as our unique, one-of-a-kind Lord and King of his kingdom. He deserves only the best. So that leads me to my testimony, which is one of my favorite things in Leviticus is um, chapter 19, verses 5 through 8. When you offer a fellowship sacrifice to the Lord, sacrifice it so that you may be accepted it is to be eaten on the day you sacrifice it or on the next day but what remains on the third day must be burnt if any is eaten on the third day it is a repulsive thing and it will not be accepted anyone who eats it will bear his iniquity for he has profaned what is holy to the lord that person is to be cut off from his people so let me explain what i got out of that but when i read this part for me i started to think about tithes tithes that's basically a tenth of your income to me tithe is non-negotiable and you know that's where I am on my walk. You may be at a different place, but since I, you know, read and understand what tithe is, I don't skip it. But what I would do is I was so laxed with it to the point where I would forget to go to the bank and then I'll be like, oh, let me just give it in next week. It got so bad that I was like, okay, let me just take my tithe out automatically because I usually like I go to the bank once a month, but then that other week where I don't go to the bank, um, I usually forget to take my tithes out. So I said, let me set my tithes out automatically so I'm not so behind or it's not like coming out late, you know, because I would still give it. But it would be like if it, if I miss one week, it's two weeks late. If I miss another week, that's two. That's a whole month late. When I was I set it up automatically and I realized that it wasn't coming out of my account until like 10 days later. Like I was getting paid that Friday and it wasn't getting coming out until not the Monday but the Monday after. The reason why this convicted me is because I would go to the bank to take out money for my nails. Bruh. I would go to the bank to take out money for groceries and gas and I'm just like why and I would never miss a beat. I never not have nail money and I'm like why am I doing this for something that can't even like it's not even really beneficial something just to do something that's vain but then when it comes to the lord i'm skipping weeks and it's coming out late so when it says when this scripture said when you offer a sacrifice sacrifice is to be eaten on the day or the next day i was like so when i'm paid i should be taking the money out that day or the next day because i need to be giving god my best i hope that this was helpful um if you have any questions comments or concerns please leave them down below remember i love you i'm here for you and i'm praying for you bye don't forget to subscribe. Did you like the video yet? Click that notification bell.